Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to be the first one about photosynthesis. And I wanted to start with the word photosynthesis itself. If you look at the word photosynthesis, the photo part actually refers to light, and it means that light is part of a process. And synthesis is a process which means to build. So the word photosynthesis actually means to build with light. That's exactly what organisms like plants do. Okay, photosynthesis is chemistry. It's some very complicated chemistry, but for freshman biology students, you only really need to know the basics here. So that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, cells use the energy from light and carbon dioxide and water to build an energy storage molecule called glucose. You probably remember this from middle school. All right, so the energy is coming from the sun. Carbon dioxide is coming from the atmosphere usually, or the water, if you're a water plant. And of course, water is falling to the ground as rain, or if you're a water plant, you're surrounded by it. And these things are being combined in a very special chemical process called photosynthesis to build a large energy storage molecule called glucose. All right, and you remember glucose is C6H12O6, and it kind of has this hexagonal shape. Now, there's also a pigment involved in this process called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll's green and has a really cool shape. I think it's actually one of the more beautiful bio, one of the more beautiful molecules in organic chemistry. And what's really cool about glucose is this atom right here in the middle, kind of like a cage built out of carbon, and this is a magnesium atom. Um, that's why plants have to have magnesium to make their chlorophylls. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, now glucose is an energy storage molecule that cells use to grow, to reproduce, to maintain their balance, and to repair and replace body parts, okay? And plants can make it, and we can't make it, so that means we are fundamentally different from plants. Um, glucose is just the start. Plants can use glucose to metabolize thousands of other products. You probably have heard of some of these, cellulose, fats, oils, vanilla, drugs like cocaine, uh, foods, starchy foods, amino acids, uh, chemicals like turpentine, which is used in paint thinners, caffeine, another drug from plants you probably have heard about, tannic acids, which are um, things, which are, the, which are the chemicals that make tea turn water brown, uh, THC, which is another drug, the active ingredient in marijuana, um, chocolate flavor, uh, latex, mint flavors, it goes on and on. All those chemicals are made starting with glucose. So plants don't just make glucose. Now because plants are making all of this stuff using carbon dioxide, sunlight energy, and water, we call them producers. Another way of thinking about them is autotrophs because they have the ability to make their own food. But don't forget, plants are not the only autotrophs. Uh, there are also algae. Uh, like these, this, this is a picture of a, a, a very large algae called kelp, which lives in the ocean. And there are bacteria called cyanobacteria that are capable of doing photosynthesis and being just as productive and just as autotrophic as green plants. Now, eukaryotes, like plants and algae, do their photosynthesis in a special compartment called a chloroplast, uh, whereas cyanobacteria don't have compartments like chloroplasts, so they do their photosynthesis in their cytoplasm. So they don't have organelles like chloroplasts. So just remember, we've talked about this already, but just reminding you that um, eukaryotes like plants and algae have chloroplasts which specialize in photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is an uphill chemical reaction, which means just like the um, analogy of pushing a car uphill, if you stop pushing, it's going to roll back downhill and it will not go uphill unless energy is added. So I think a, the best way to understand this idea of photosynthesis as an uphill reaction is to make an energy graph. So we're going to graph energy on the y-axis. So as you move up, the energy gets higher, and as you move down, the energy gets lower. And we're going to graph time on the x-axis. And so the time here is going to be the time between the reactants changing into the products. Now remember, the reactants for photosynthesis are carbon dioxide and water. And what happens in photosynthesis is energy from the sun is used to push carbon dioxide and water molecules uphill to produce an energy storage molecule called glucose. And glucose actually contains the exact same energy that once shined on the chloroplast as sunlight. Now we also get a waste product left over which doesn't have any energy called oxygen, which goes into the atmosphere. All right, so I'm hoping this graph shows you the uphill nature of
photosynthesis, where you're taking two reactants, carbon dioxide and water, and you're combining them in an uphill chemical process that produces glucose. Now, you're going to need to memorize this chemical reaction. All right? This is the formal reaction for photosynthesis. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, in the presence of sunlight energy and using the, um, the pigment called chlorophyll to produce one glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules, which of course are the waste gas. So C six CO2s plus six H2Os produces one glucose and six oxygens. These things over here are referred to as the reactants. Okay, in chemistry, reactants are always to the left of the arrow. And these two things over here are called the products. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll stop there. The next video cast is going to be about the light reactions and Calvin cycle, the two parts of photosynthesis.